for my technical friends decided that I'm going to submit an FMR or feature modification request to the Zoom platform. And here's my vision that while in Zoom, you right click and menu pops up with a variety of rotten fruits and vegetables. And then you scroll and pick which one you want and then left click. And then that zooms towards the screen. And then there's a really loud splat for everybody on the call. And then you could get points throughout the meeting for uh, how successful your aim is. Okay. What do you, what do we fear? Do you fear the flu? Do you fear COVID, which is just a nasty strain of the flu? Do we fear the unknown? Do we fear injections? Do we fear not getting injections? Do we fear masks? What if I don't wear a mask? What if I go somewhere and I do wear a mask? What if my kids are required to wear masks? Do we fear access to services? In Australia, the truck drivers, they call them the truckies down there, decided that they're gonna teach the government a lesson and they went on gridlock. It's just to send a message to the government. And there was a number of truck drivers here in the US not covered by the media that did a similar thing, not nationwide. When we hear a hurricane coming and we run and buy our white bread and milk, uh, we may see a time again when we go to the grocery store and the shelves are empty. We may be happy-go-lucky walking down the aisle only to turn the corner and find out once again, no toilet paper. What do we fear? Do we fear disapproval on social media where the number of votes you get is equivalent to truth? Is how it's interpreted? Do we fear losing our comfort zone? I'll challenge you that not just American culture that we in the church look down on, but yet the American church has become a place of comfort. And a lot of the things that we're fearing really boil down to a loss of comfort, a loss of convenience. Do we fear death? Do we live in a holy fear of a holy God? Do we live in fear of judgment? The judgment of God upon you, me, my family, the church for what we've allowed to happen? Because it's a whole year, the CDC has reported COVID deaths in 2020 to be 385,000, a little bit more. In 2020, 385,000. Now that's skewed because due to intentional and unintentional misreporting, a lot of that is just the common flu. Flu numbers went way down, COVID went way up. 385,000. In the same year, in 2020, Anybody know how many abortions? In 2020? The estimate, and it's conservative, is 862,000. 862,000. And that is grossly underreported. I defer to your numbers because a law was passed that went into effect in 2014, that they're not required to report anymore. 
all the reporting since 2014 is voluntary. Fear, a painful emotion or passion excited by expectation of evil or apprehension of impending danger. Fear, dread, terror, fright. Fear is accompanied with a desire to avoid or ward off the expected evil. We fear the unknown often, and we, what can I do to prevent this from happening? Our imagination runs wild, fueled by thoughts inspired by the enemy. Fear is an uneasiness of mind upon the thought of future evil likely to befall us and all the anxiety that accompanies it. Can you turn with me to Isaiah 41? <clears throat> I'm going to defer tonight and interweave my thoughts, that's Isaiah 41, with a gentleman who penned his thoughts in 1870, C.H. Spurgeon. Because when I read it, I knew I couldn't do any better than a lot of the things he expressed. And I, I'm just going to take a few excerpts and I'll find it online and send out the reference so you can read the whole thing because it's really pretty powerful. Isaiah 41, 9 to 10. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, thou art my servant. I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Now, in the verses that I read, the TH words are sprinkled through there. Thee, thou, that means individual person. Bill Spry, who I have taken from the ends of the earth and called Rich Greer from the chief men thereof and said unto Tad Fox, Ruth Redman, art my servant. I have chosen Ben Lewis. A great way to personalize these verses is to read them and put your name in there and pray these back to God. I defer to Mr. Spurgeon. You are a people called out by his special grace with a gracious call, which they have not been able to resist. And have you come forth and declared yourselves on the Lord's side? For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Referencing Romans, if you are called, depend upon it that you are chosen. I do not mean if you're called in the common sense with the universal call of the gospel, but for that sense, many are called, but few are chosen. But I mean, if you are effectually called, personally called of the Holy Ghost, called as Mary was, when Jesus said to her, Mary, and that gracious voice thrilled through her soul. And she responded to it and said to him, Master, have you been so called that you have forsaken all for Christ or are willing to do so? Have you left your old pleasures and your old companions? And are you now a separated one set apart for Christ? Oh, if it be so, let nothing keep you back from enjoying the riches of this text in Isaiah. For every sentence in it belongs to you. Are you, I, we, willing to forsake the TV? We're hungry for the news because there's so much stuff happening and we're feeling the pressure. Are you willing to forsake social media? Fear-mongering and gaslighting, CRT, racism, self-serving buffoonery from leaders who do not know Christ or adhere to his teachings, who ignore the tenets of the one who created them, 
These are the voices we listen to. I'm imploring us all to increase the amount of time we spend in the word. Turn again to Mr. Spurgeon. A servant does not do his own will. He would soon get his discharge, be carried out his whims and wishes. He takes his guidance from his master's mouth and his master's eye. Have you submitted your will to God's will? Are you no longer governed by a proud and high spirit which cries, who is the Lord that I should obey him? But do you desire to know what God's will is and then do just what he bids you? Do you count it your highest honor to be called a servant of Christ? Is it for him that you live? Is it his glory, your highest aim? In these verses in Isaiah 41, there's a reference to a very natural disease, fear. Secondly, a command against fear, fear thou not. And thirdly, God's promise to help us overcome. Let's turn to that one more time in Isaiah 41, verse 9. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, that's a command, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am the God, I will strengthen thee, I will help thee, I will uphold thee with thy right hand of my righteousness. Let us make sure that our sin does not cause us to be afraid of communion with God and following his commands. Whatever emotions you're feeling about what's going on at the personal or local or national or international level, level, whatever emotions you're feeling, take it to him. He can handle it. He has broad shoulders. Even if you're angry at him for what's happening, he can handle it. Not the first one to be angry at God because you don't understand what's happening or he's allowed something that you don't agree with. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. <sighs> Mr. Spurgeon again. Be it also remarked before we leave this point that even the strongest of God's servants are sometimes the subjects of fear. David was a very strong man and he overthrew Goliath, but we read that on one occasion when he was in battle, David waxed faint. You see, it's not about avoiding fear. Fear is a natural emotion like anger is. The point is, what do you do with it when it comes? And what you do with it is a choice based upon your character, which has hopefully been developed and matured by time with the Lord, time in his word, time under your family, your parents. Dismayed, disheartened, deprived of courage. Courage is what you do because of character. Fear is sin. Doubts and fears breed sin. The Lord says, for I am with thee. We're not alone. I am thy God. <laughs> Jonah's gourd was withered, but God was not. Your goods, your property, your things may go, I live in the city. Because of what's happening politically, there's a large uptick in home robberies while people are asleep, stealing cars, defacing property. Your goods may go, but your God will not. Those around you may rob you of your loose cash of present comfort. Not just cash, but our cash or currency or of present comfort. We may be robbed of comfort, but your invested capital in God, they cannot take from you. God says, I will strengthen the yea. Mr. Spurgeon, the strength which I have to do my work with does not lie in me. If it did, it would be all over with me. How little strength there is in this arm, I sorrowfully know. But there's no man on earth who can tell me how much strength God might, if he so willed, put into that same arm. 
Admit to the Lord you're afraid and challenge him to strengthen you. Claim his promise. The Lord says, I will help thee. Yay. Where does his help come from? FedEx from heaven? Do we seek miracles? The church gives us out a balance when we pray and somebody gets healed. And then certain groups begin to seek those miracles as evidence of God's presence. And they often forsake the word and the balanced doctrine that's wherein, that is within. However, we, many conservatives, are so afraid of those people that sometimes we miss God doing things because we're not claiming his promises. We're not seeking to walk in boldness. We're missing it. And this is an opportunity for him to show himself mighty if we turn to him and pray. He will not only give you strength to use yourselves, but he will exert his strength both in other men and his providence to help you. So where does help come from? Directly from the Lord sometimes, but also from the body, right? From each other. During this time, we've pulled together and helped each other, reached out to each other, and we need to continue to do that. This isn't over yet, and it's going to get worse before it gets better. I guarantee it. But our focus, our aim, needs to be true. The Lord says, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. That's the same hand that holds the stars in their place, Mr. Spurgeon says. That is the hand which bears up the unpillared arch of heaven that spans both sea and shore. Can it not bear you up or rest upon it, and you shall not be cast down? The right hand of his righteousness is the very hand that you and I once had cause to fear, lest our offended king should smite us with it. For we righteously deserved his wrath. But ever since the hand of Christ was pierced, the right hand of God has never smitten a believer so as to destroy him. Doesn't mean we haven't been disciplined, eh? That same hand which might have crushed is now placed under us to bear us up in all our afflictions. Can you join me in Romans 8? Romans 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom did he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called them, he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, or COVID, or politics, or war. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded 
that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In closing, please join me in Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Proverbs 29 says the fear in verse 25, the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall come nigh thee only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation, there shall be no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Thou shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and at her, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, will I deliver him, I will set him on high, because... He hath known my name. He shall call upon me. I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? God will sustain us in this time of trouble. So let's cast our cares upon him. Let's turn off our devices. Spend more time in the word with our families. Reading it out loud in context, passages, and books. Let the Holy Spirit do his work in our hearts. Ask for his strength and claim his promises. Thank you, and may the Lord bless the reading of his word.